Jessie V. And in today's video, we are going back in time to the 1800s, back to the Victorian era, when some people used to fake talking to the dead. In the Victorian era, psychics and mediums were all the rage, and they enjoyed their fame and fortune associated with their ability to speak to the spirit world. And while some of those people might have been legit, other people definitely faked it, and the ways they did it are fascinating and awful at the same time. By the way, do you like my bat wing shirt? I'm definitely wearing it the wrong way. I think this is supposed to be on the back because it's like choking me right now, <laughs> but I think it's really cool. I also wanted to mention guys before I get started that May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Many of you who have followed me for a long time know that I myself have Lyme disease. I found out back in 2017 and with the warm weather coming out and with you guys wanting to be in nature and on hikes, please make sure you're wearing tick spray. I wouldn't advise going through tall grass or walking through bushes, but if you have to, wear long pants, wear long sleeves, wear boots that go up to your knees, and make sure when you come back in the house that you take off your clothes, throw them into the laundry and have a shower right away. And also grab a partner when you come back in the house, whether it's your family or friend or whatever, and have them do a tick check on you and you do it for them as well. I also wanna mention that a dollar from every single purchase that you make on our website goes towards the G Magnata Foundation, which is a Lyme disease research center. So you guys can get something really awesome from our website, but also be helping out a really great cause. And if you guys would like to just donate directly to the G Magnata Foundation, I will also link their website down below. There is so much that still needs to be done in terms of Lyme disease research and in terms of people having access to a proper diagnosis and testing. So if you guys would like any of our new awesome summer and spring merch that we have out now, I have linked it down below. I showed you guys this before, but my favorite items are these slippers that we have. This one's from my line. I love how it's like happy faces with lightning bolts for eyes. And this one's from my mom. It's smiley daisies and they're just so comfortable. I love them. They're just great to wear around the house and I will put a link to those down below in the description. All right guys, so let's get right into today's video. So people in the late 19th century and early 20th century had this morbid obsession with death. And so they were therefore fascinated with the idea of communicating with those that have passed on. And this could be attributed to the high death rates and low life expectancy from back then, forcing people to come to terms with death a lot earlier on. In today's time, people are living a lot longer. We have better health care. People get cured when they're sick. But back then, people got sick all the time and died all the time. And with this fascination with spirits, there was a lot of con artists that came about to profit off of it. They came up with tricks to convince people they were actually communicating with the dead when they weren't. So I wanted to go over some of those tricks with you guys today. The first one is called spirit wrapping. Spirit wrapping is the phenomenon of ghostly communication through knocks on walls or furniture. So one could ask if a spirit was present in the room and they would ask that spirit for a knock to confirm they were there. Sometimes the spirit could even recite the alphabet by matching the knock to a letter to spell out words and sentences. Now, the biggest con artists out there when it came to spirit rapping were three sisters and they were called the Fox Sisters. Their names were Kate, Maggie, and Leah. They would perform their seances in a room of their house in New York where they had set up a system of apples tied to strings to make thumping sounds on the floor, ceiling, and walls. And eventually they graduated to the manipulation of their own joints to make cracking and popping noises. That is just like so creepy to me. And they were extremely successful doing this for a long period of time. People would pay them so much money and these girls would literally have fake knocking happening throughout the house whenever they asked the spirit a question, but it was all fake. Eventually though, their ruse did fall apart. The sisters started to argue with each other in front of their clients because Maggie started to express hate for what they were doing. She started to feel guilty, didn't want to do it anymore, but her other two sisters wanted to keep going. So one day Maggie was so frustrated with them that in front of an entire group of people that they were performing to, she revealed all of their tapping and knocking tricks, like in front of all these people watching. And so obviously word got out about this and they weren't able to do this anymore. And I mean, that's just karma. If you're lying and conning people, it's gonna come back to bite you. I'm actually pretty glad that Maggie pulled the plug on that one. Okay, the next thing is items that people put into a locked 
box. And these con artist mediums told people they could describe what they put in the box. Each participant of the seance was instructed to bring a small personal object with them, which they placed in a concealed box that was locked. And like I said, the medium would then reveal what they put into each box, like down to the last detail. And people were just so flabbergasted by this. Like imagine bringing a personal item from home that nobody else has seen, nobody else knows, and someone's just able to guess what it is. So you're probably wondering, how did this con artist medium do it? So the audience believed they were watching the box the entire time. But while the lights were off, the assistant switched the original boxes containing the items with an exact replica of the box. And so that assistant was able to take their boxes backstage, look at what the items were, and there was this wireless radio in the medium's ear, and they were able to communicate what all those details were. So it was pretty sneaky behavior. Then we have something called spirit trumpets. Spirit trumpets were long cones that would mysteriously float about the room and amplify the voice of spirits during a seance. This mysterious instrument was usually used in tandem with the manifestation cabinet. So once the medium was inside the cabinet, they had access to a tube that was connected to the trumpet. So they could like stand there and whisper into the tube and it would just sound like these awful disembodied voices that were going through the crowd. So people were terrified. The trumpet would move around via a system of cords and wires operated by assistants backstage. So because it was so dark in the room, because these con artist mediums always had the lights go out, obviously, the people wouldn't see this trumpet floating around. So it would literally sound like ghosts were all around you. And obviously the lights being off also adds to the creepy ambiance. Then we have the levitating tables. Imagine a casual Friday night seance when suddenly the table begins to levitate. And this would both scare the participants out of their pants and would just make them believers in the paranormal. Con artist mediums had a plethora of tricks for making tables move and float during a seance. Some were as simple as using a kitchen knife in your sleeve to slip into a particularly lightweight table's drawer to lift it. Although this was a pretty dangerous thing to do because you're in the dark and you have a knife and you're trying to lift a table. More advanced grifters built tools just for lifting tables during seances, including wrist cuffs with hooks concealed under the sleeves. And like I keep saying, because these tricks took place in the dark, it was just so simple for them. They could whip out these tools, no one would see them, and they could just lift the tables. And it would just convince all these people that paranormal activity was actually happening. And then lastly, we have the ectoplasm. This one is like the weirdest one to me. Ectoplasm described any of the many substances that would materialize from the orifices of a medium during a seance while they were channeling a spirit. Con artists would fake the appearance of ectoplasm, often telling the audience member it would kill the medium if any of them attempted to touch the substance. That and the fact that these seances once again were being performed in complete darkness, it just made it easy for this con artist medium to fake what was happening because in the dark you saw this stuff coming out of their mouth and their nose and it looked real because of how dim the lighting was. Each medium had their own special blend of tools that they called ectoplasm but most commonly it was just a dish rag, cotton, or muslin. It's funny because when I was doing research and looking at all these photos, it clearly looks like a napkin to me <laughs> or like some sort of cloth, but the people in the moment in the dark thought it was legit. Martha Baroud was the most famous medium using ectoplasm of the day. She would often incorporate faces into her gauzy ectoplasm cut from newspapers, and she was exposed as a fraud when seance attendees spotted celebrities and politicians they had seen in the morning paper. So yeah, the thing is a lot of these people were eventually found out and known as frauds, so they couldn't keep it up forever, which makes sense. But yeah, I just wanted to end this video off saying, do not do seances, okay? Don't try to actively communicate with the dead, with spirits. Oftentimes it can go really wrong, whether you're with a con artist or whether you're actually trying to communicate with actual spirits. It's just, it's not a good thing to do and I would never ever advise it. That's why I'm talking to you guys about all the fake scenarios and not the real ones, because we don't do those real ones. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want me to continue doing weird things from history, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget, if you'd like to check out any of our new spring or summer merch, a dollar goes towards our Lyme Disease Foundation. I've linked everything down below, but I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!